It moves about two degrees away during this initial retraction. It will lift away, excuse me, it will move away even further upon liftoff. Coming up in less than 30 seconds, we should hear the call out for stage one LOX load complete. That will be the indication to indicate that the first stage is fully loaded with all of its liquid oxygen. As of right now, our fuel, uh, which is RP-1, our rocket grade kerosene, uh, is completely Stage loaded. Stage load complete. And there's that call out indicating that the Falcon 9 first stage is fully loaded with uh, the liquid oxygen or LOX, as well as RP-1, our rocket grade kerosene. We're now awaiting completion of LOX load on the second stage, which we're expecting to wrap up in about 40 seconds from now. We can now see some of the gases above the LOX tank beginning to vent away from the vehicle. Those will vent even further once all of the liquid oxygen has completed uh, the loading up onto the vehicle. Now standing by. Stage two, locks load complete. And there's that call out letting us know that Falcon 9 second stage is now fully loaded with all of its liquid oxygen as well. So with that being said, Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with all of its propellants. Ground gas close outs. Equaling to about 1 million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. The booster, or the first stage of the rocket that you see on screen, is flying for a record-breaking 16th time today. After liftoff and stage separation, this booster is scheduled to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which you see there on your screen now. As many of you already know, successfully recovering parts of the rocket allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, Falcon is in startup. which in turns drive down the cost of space access. We heard the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup, awaiting the final go from our launch director. Go for launch. And there we just heard, the launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. Let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 22 Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and lift off. Go start. Go start. We're now at T plus 34 seconds and counting. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 from Cape Canaveral, Florida at 11.58 p.m. Eastern Time. Next Nominal power and telemetry. Next major milestone coming up is Max-Q, and that's when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of external stresses as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Falcon 9 is supersonic. That call out there tells us that the vehicle is traveling faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. There we heard the call out for Max Q. 
Again, that's when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure during flight. Now we're about a minute away from a series of vents that will occur back to back. First one will be main engine cutoff or MECO, followed by stage separation, SES-1, and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff or MECO, as indicated on the timeline at the bottom of your screen, is where all nine of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down. Stage separation will follow, as the names indicate. The first stage will separate from the second stage, followed by SES-1, and that's where the second engine start um, or second engine start one, that's where we will light the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Moments ago, we heard the call out for MVAC engine chill had begun, indicating that we are beginning to chill the engine in preparation for second engine start one. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And as you just saw and heard over the nets, we've had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1. You can see a nice orange glow developing there on the MVAC nozzle. We're coming up on fairing separation from the first stage in just a few seconds. In the top left corner of that screen on the left-hand side, you can actually make out the coast fairing of Florida. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we can see on screen the fairing separation. We will be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel, Bob. Both of the fairing halves supporting today's mission are flight-proven and flying for the ninth time with today's mission. The MVAC engine that you see there on your screen is attached to the second stage and it's continuing with its burn and that will last for about another five minutes. As for the first stage, it is on its way back to Earth towards our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Prior to fairing separation, we had a nice view of the Starlink satellites. The Starlink satellites flying on today's mission are... Opposition of signal, Bermuda. The satellites flying on today's mission are our second generation satellites. Internally, we call them V2 minis. The full-sized V2 satellites are designed to be flown on our larger launch system, which we call Starship, while the V2 minis have been modified to fly on board Falcon 9. But even though the V2 minis are smaller than the full-size V2s, they are still much bigger than our previous satellites. More importantly, the V2 minis include more advanced phased array antennas and the use of E-band for backhaul, which means that Starlink will be able to provide about four times more capacity per satellite than earlier iterations. Starlink currently has 1.5 million subscribers, Oh, excuse me, over 1.5 million subscribers, but that additional capacity no, means trajectory. that additional capacity means we'll be able to connect millions more people around the world with high-speed internet. As I mentioned earlier, today's Starlink mission marks SpaceX's 46th mission just this year and 245th mission overall. The, the next milestone coming up in our mission is entry burn, and that will be for the first stage, and that will be the first of two burns that it will go through in preparation for landing. Expecting entry burn to begin in about 15 seconds. Stage one, engine burn startup. Stage one, FTS is saved. 
you can see on screen, and there we also heard the call out for stage one entry burn. Stage one, which we also refer to as the booster, has ignited engines one, five, and nine. Stage one entry so burn. The, the center engine and two radial engines, and that helps to slow it down for at atmospheric reentry. Stage two FTS is saved. So with that entry burn complete for the first stage, the next burn will be the landing burn. Nominal trajectory. Everything continuing to look nominal for the second stage carrying our Starlink satellites. Stage one, transonic. That call out there indicates that the first stage is traveling near the speed of sound. The next event coming up will be the landing bird. And we expect that to occur, uh, we expect the landing burn to begin just momentarily. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. There's confirmation that the stage one landing burn has started in preparation for touchdown on our drone ship, which you see there on the right hand side of your screen. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And as you can see on your screen, the Falcon 9 uh, first stage has now successfully launched and landed for a record-breaking 16th time. We're now coming up to our second engine cutoff for the MVAC engine. Expected loss of signal, CAPE. Terminal parking orbit. Unfortunately, no views, but there we did hear the call out that we were waiting for, uh, indicating that we have a good orbit. And with that, uh, today's landing marks our 206th overall landing of an orbital class rocket, including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda. With confirmation of successful first stage landing and second engine cutoff and parking orbit, that will wrap up our coverage for now. Be sure to check our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. Thanks for watching.